Welcome everybody to the Cornhole Network. I'm ACL Pro Eric Cherney, here today with Jody Lim, ACL Pro. We're gonna talk to you today about flat bags and how to throw a flat bag once and for all. The most common mistakes a new player will have when trying to throw a flat bag are, one is the nose, nose down in the bag, which does not travel up the board very well. The second most common is an inside tilt. With an inside tilt, the bag's gonna travel left to right when it contacts the board. The third most common is lack of spin. That spin will both help travel through the air and flatten the bag. So we're gonna tackle these three issues. Uh, first, with spin. We wanna get more spin on your bag. The best way to create spin is making sure you have a, a release of your hand and making sure that your hand turns from left to right for a right-hander and starts to rotate that bag. When trying to create maximum amount of spin, you'll see players who oftentimes will have an even rotation, an even amount of movement in their wrist, and that will create sort of a reasonable amount of spin, but not maximum spin. If you're looking for maximum spin, you really need to delay that, and it's the snap at the end. It's that wrist movement at the end, almost like when you shoot a free throw and it's coming off your fingertips, right? Um, it is the snap at the end that produces the maximum amount of spin, and the more snap that you can generate, the more spin you'll get, um, and that will create a more flat bag. And once you have that flat bag, the accuracy part can be added back in. So my grip is a little bit different than probably most. I actually have a, uh, my forefinger over the top of the corner. So I'm grabbing the entire bag and get more beads inside of my hand so they don't move around. It makes for me a lot easier to, to release and create that spin. I flick with my wrist at, at the end to create the most um, amount of rotation in my bag. So the second most common problem with throwing a flat bag is an inside tilt. That's when you have one corner kind of down and your bag's flying like this. Um, and that is gonna be produced from somebody who normally brings their wrist down and doesn't keep their bag flat, but releases here. And it's gonna be a little bit softer and it's gonna create that left to right movement on the board. We'll talk about it sometimes a little bit as maybe somebody's being a little lazy. They're just kind of flinging their bag out there. They're flinging their bag out there. And you'll see me as I'm flinging my bag out there, my hand's not flat, right? If, you're, if your hand is here, your bag's going to track the way your hand is, it, is moving. So you really want to finish flat. You know, you'll talk about, you know, one way to really work on that is to make sure you finish flat, hand at the hole. If you're flat and hand at the hole, your bag is going to be reasonably flat and at the hole. Yeah, some of the things that I, I think, at least for me, when I was learning how to get rid of that tilt was getting rid of some of the tension in your in your hand. You know, you tend, when you have a lot more tension, it, it just doesn't want to release. So by being able to, to relax a little bit in, in that hand helps you really get that flick and release to, towards the board. So the other thing too about my, my traditional bag has moved more from a true flat bag to a outside tilt. And that outside tilt uh, isn't real strong in most of my shots, uh, but that's going to give me a slight right to left movement on my bag. And what you're gonna see me throwing is at release, I'm actually gonna be over. It took me a long time to get that feeling. You'll feel it all the way up into your wrist and into your elbow to release with that bag with the outside tilt. And what Eric's doing, I think it's, uh, for me, it's mu much like golf when I was trying to get rid of a slice, right? <laughs> you know, you practice trying to do just the opposite, which is create a hook um, by, by turning your hands over. Well, he's actually doing the opposite, turning his hand all the way to the opposite direction of what would be normally pretty natural. You, if you end up being able to throw a bag with that outside tilt, um, it's easier to dial it back um, to a flatter bag, even an inside, depending on the shot you're looking for. The other most common error that we see from, from people that are picking up bags is that nose down throw. Um, and more often than not, that is 
generated because of their lack of throwing the, the bag forward and, and reaching towards your target. I do still tend to th throw a nose down bag slightly, so, but you get used to throwing that and you adjust to your, to your spot, your landing spot as a result. But ideally you'd wanna get that bag as flat as possible so you minimize any, any chance of that bag walking left or right from your target. For me, one of the things that I try to do is actually start on my back foot and actually lean towards the, towards the hole, which helps with that bag coming up as a result as well, in addition to the hand flattening out. So the nose down throw is, is pretty natural for most players when they start. And the reason being is when you bowl, when you play bocce ball, when you play softball, your release is going to be sort of palm at the target. Nose down flight is not a bad thing. Uh, as Jody said, there are quite a few players who throw with a nose down bag. Um, a nose down bag, particularly indoors where you don't have wind issues, is definitely gonna fly true and you're gonna be able to get consistent results as long as that nose down is consistent. If you wanna correct it, you're gonna really need to focus on keeping your fingers up at release. Right? You're gonna wanna keep that fingers up at release because what's happening is you're probably releasing here as opposed to here. So it, it can be a little tricky to get that sort of motion and feel confident with your fingers up as opposed to here because you feel like you're pushing at the target when you're down low. You have to throw some bags, you have to trust and build that muscle memory with your fingers up. If you are struggling with a flat bag, work on the three things we talked about here today. You're going to see results. If you continue to work on it, your practice is gonna get better, your bags are gonna get better, and your game is gonna get better, and it's all gonna be coming out of that flat bag. And that's what we want you guys to take away from today's video. Thanks for joining us today at the Cornhole Network. We wanna see you guys out there throwing a flat bag. Let's go.